Guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another episode of Arsenio's English Learning. Today is about IELTS. You know what? First time I'm actually doing one of these videos, I do hope it helps a lot of you out there. But I've actually broken down one of these true, false, and not given paragraphs. A lot of you have asked me to do this. I was thinking about doing it on Facebook Live, but then I said, you know what? No, I just don't want to do it on Facebook Live. Instead, I want to do it on YouTube. Because then on Facebook Live, the mirror image actually messes up everything. So you see everything backwards, right? So that's why I'm actually doing it here on YouTube. Hopefully you guys check this out. And this will make it easier for all of you to actually, you know, put forth a little bit of effort into this. So guys, true, false, and not given. I love this. I've actually done some of the episodes, again, I think on my, uh, my YouTube channel, if not my Facebook channel. It is very foggy outside. Anyways, um, and so now I just need to, you know, get all this fog at my eyes and we're going to focus on this. So I broke it down already. You guys know how to find it. Now I'm going to show you how to find it and how to dissect these questions. All right. So this is actually from book number nine, Cambridge IELTS. Of course, it goes up to 13. It's probably up to 14 this year, I think. Uh, yeah. So this is from book number nine. This is passage one. If you guys want to do it yourself, look at it, etc., etc. So, guys, with that being said, man, let's get into this. So, here we go. I'm going to flip this bad boy around like I normally do. Why? Because I'm cool like that. Oh, that's the, what is that, the Diggable Planet, something like that? That song? I forgot what it was called. But anyways, okay, just making sure it's lined up, guys. Again, I do a pop. Ooh, we got barely that black line. I hope that's all right. Yeah, that's, that's not too bad. That's all right. Huh? Look at that. I'm sexy. So here we go. William Henry Perkins. So guys, you are not going to read the passage. That's rule number one. Rule number one, actionable steps. Do not read the passage. You go straight to the questions. We don't give a damn about the passage. As a matter of fact, if you actually read the passage, you're going to make yourself even more confused. So what we do, we go straight to the questions. So here we go. True, false, and not given. I'm going to blow this a little bit more up for you guys so you can see this. Uh, scoot it over just a little bit. Yeah, right there. So again, true if the statement agrees with the information. False if the statement contradicts the information. And not given. There is no information on this. So guys, I love this. What are we looking for in these questions? Well, if we look at number one, Michael Faraday. I love that. That's a proper noun. Okay, so we have to look for the first where it is mentioned first. Okay, where is Michael Faraday mentioned first? Now, again, next keyword, first person, recognize Perkins, another proper noun, ability, student, chemistry. All right, so again, you're going to underline this. Okay, Michael Faraday, first person, Perkins ability, student, chemistry. Boom, done. And you go straight back into the passage. So you say, okay, okay, so what do I got right now, Arsenio? Okay, teacher AJ, teacher Arsenio, whatever you may call yourself. Where is Michael Faraday first mentioned? And this is the best part because, boom, I've actually highlighted it for you. So, again, what we're going to do, what we need to do, we need to figure out where the passage where the information is. So again, I found Michael Faraday. Okay. Now we have to look for Perkins. Now Perkins was mentioned, of course, in the first paragraph, but we're looking for the recognition of the ability. All right. Now, Michael Faraday, we find it here. Royal Institution speeches. Now these speeches fired the young chemist enthusiasm further. That's it. The speeches did not the recognition of the ability. Now, the yellow indicates number one. So this is where I found it. Perkins scientific gifts. What is another synonym for abilities? Gifts. Perkins scientific gifts soon caught Hoffman's attention. Ah, not Michael Faraday, but it caught Hoffman's attention. So your answer for, of course, that number one. Let's go back to it. Michael Faraday. First person, recognize Perkins' ability, student of chemistry. No, it isn't. It was Hoffman. So the information is actually in the text, but wrong guy. So what is the answer? It's not not given. That means the information is nowhere to be found. The answer is false. 
So I hope you guys understand that. All right, so we're going to go into question number two. Now, I like this one too because it's in the same area. If you get an easy passage like this on the IELTS examination, you better get excited because all this information on this particular passage is squished together. And that's what we want to do. Now, you might have information that's all over the place on two pages, but if you get lucky, you might find this. So let's get into this. More proper nouns, baby. So number two, Michael Faraday suggested, meaning he gave Perkin a suggestion, enroll Royal College of Chemistry. So Royal College of Chemistry, that's the big proper noun, right? So Royal, Co boom, there it is, Royal College of Chemistry. The red indicates the number two. So at the time of Perkin's enrollment, now, did Michael Faraday suggest Perkin to enroll? Now, Michael Faraday, given by a scientist, that's all he is, a scientist, Michael Faraday, Royal Institution. Now, did he say anything about Perkins, hey, you know what? I think you should go to the Royal College of Chemistry. It says, at the time of Perkins' enrollment, the Royal College of Chemistry was headed by the noted German chemist. That's all it says. It says nothing else. Then it goes into, of course, what we just went over in number one. And then he became Hoffman's youngest assistant, which is the next part. That's number three. So, guys, what does that mean? Did he suggest? Is there any information about him suggesting to Perkins to enroll in the Royal College of Chemistry? There's nothing in the text. Therefore, what is the answer? It is not given. Why? There's no information. Again, Michael Faraday, did he say, Perkins, you should go to the Royal College? No, Perkins just decided to go to the Royal College. There's no information about that. That's how you find it. So guys, that number three is just right under the next sentence. So again, Perkin employed, meaning Perkin employed August Wilhelm Hoffman as his assistant. I love this one so much because it's so easy. So, again, let's go right back to the text and what it says here. Perkin's scientific gifts were caught by Hoffman. Okay? Now, Hoffman was a German chemist. How can a 15-year-old boy employ a German chemist? But again, that's all speculation. We need to find facts. He became Hoffman's youngest assistant. He, Perkins, became Hoffman's youngest assistant. This says Perkins employed August as his assistant. The information is flipped. So therefore, the answer is false. Does that make sense? Now, we're going to keep going. If you guys have anything to say, please mention it in the comment section. I'll be more than happy to answer any of your lovely questions. So let's get into the next one. Number four. First, we have to check it out, of course. And I think number four indicates that it is purple more than likely. Yes, it is the purple. So here we go. Bam. Number four. The trees. Okay, that's the key word. Kinning. I don't even know how to pronounce it. Who cares? Canine, kinning, kinanini. Caninine, it's up to you, all right? You can pronounce it whatever you, whatever way you want, but you need to find the first mention of it. The trees, which canine is derived, grow only in South America. It's grown only in South America, right? So again, that's your number five. So what did I find in the text? Here we go. Not long after that, scientific breakthrough, that's okay. Now we're looking for, again, the South America. Right? Now, South America, boom, that's the first mention. Boom, first mention of canine. So we know the information is in here. Now, it says the drug is derived from the bark of the the the, the, the cinchonono tree, whatever you want to call it. Native, native to South America. Native to South America. Okay? Now, the information here, it says the tree from which canine is derived grows only in South America. It says it's native, but it says grow only in South America. Now, is there any information in terms of where canine is elsewhere grown? There isn't. Now, does it also, does it talk about the trees? Let's go back here. Where are the trees? Not long after the breakthrough, no. Like what I'd like to do with the true false not given, I like to scan like this. You can just take your pen and you can find it. Now. The drug, we're talking about the drug. What drug? 
Okay, canine, the drug is derived from the bark of the chonchon tree native to South America. Now, this is one of the most difficult questions, and this could throw you guys off because I know some of you right now are saying true. However, it is not given. Why? Well, it, it just doesn't say anything about canine. Now, it does in the previous sentence. Absolutely. Because it says here, at the time, canine was the only viable medical treatment for malaria. But is canine derived from the bark? Because it says the drug is derived from. But this says canine was the only viable medical treatment. But was it a drug? You see what I mean? There's no information. And that's very, very difficult for a lot of you too. Because again, you guys will probably say, yeah, yeah, canine, yeah, it's the only viable medical treatment. And, and, and it relates to the drug. Yeah, the drug is derived from the bark of the chichon tree uh, native to South America. A lot of you would probably put true, but unfortunately it's not given. Now, some of you, again, are probably very, very confused as you guys will be confused in the last question, in question number seven. But stick with me here. Let's keep going. Because some, sometimes you're just going to lose some. You're going to get some. Some of you might understand and say, oh, no, I get it. But some of you are like, no, you probably will develop your argument. And you guys would keep on going on and on and on on how that is possibly not true. And I completely understand your point, too. So let's keep on going. Here we go. Perkin. Hope to manufacture a drug. Coal tar waste product. That's it. Coal tar waste product. Perkin. Manufacture. Drug. So here we go. Did I skip one? Yeah, I did skip one. I'm tripping. Here we go. I skipped number four. I knew I skipped something. I was like, wait, 19, 1853, 1856. Why is that highlighted? Perkin, still young, discovery, rich and famous. So let's go back. You guys are probably like, what? You skipped number four. <laughs> yes, I know. Okay, so here we go. Perkin made scientific breakthrough, right? Was he still young? Was he still young? Now, which he succeeded entering 1853 age of 15. Now, it says 1856 here. So between 1853 and 1856 at the age of 15, between 15 and 18, am I correct? Am I correct? So is that considered young? Yes. So the answer is true. Was he still young when he made that achievement, the scientific breakthrough? Yes, he was. Because we don't know exactly if it was, if he was 16 or 17, we just know that he was still young. We're not getting into the later stages of his life. We're still, he's in his teenage years. So with that being said, that's a little bit of your a blue. So is there anything else? Synthetic or desirability? Nope, I got it. Okay. All right. Sounds good. So there you go, guys. That was back to number four. Now let's get back to number six. Perkin hoped to manufacture a drug from a coal tar waste product. We need to look for coal tar waste product. Here, coal tar waste product. He was attempting to manufacture canine from aniline, an inexpensive and readily available coal tar waste product. So, what is your answer? True. Now, again, that's much, much different from number five because, again, number five was crazy difficult, but you know what? It gets even more difficult here. This phrase right here is going to throw you guys off. So, let's go to number seven. All right. It says, Perkin was inspired by the discoveries of the famous scientist Louis Pasteur. Keyword, Louis Pasteur. Perkin inspired discoveries. Perkin inspired discoveries Louis Pasteur. Okay? Or some people would say Pasteur or Pasteur. Up to you. All right? Now, was Perkin inspired by it? This is the phrase I found. And providing the truth of the famous scientist Louis Pasteur. Obviously, you're going to look for his first, the first time his name is mentioned. That's where it is. And he, he, but now, and proving the truth of famous scientist Louis Pasteur's words, chance favors only the prepared mind. Perkins saw the potential of his unexpected find. Now, was he inspired? Was he inspired? I'm going to go back to the question. Perkin was inspired by discoveries. Not by words. I want discoveries. Does it say anything about the discoveries? The first mention of, of course, Lewis is right down here. 
Okay? Well, well, right over there. I'm actually pointing from my angle. Yeah. Louis Pasteur, right? What about the discoveries? I don't see anything about the discoveries of Louis Pasteur. Now, he was possibly inspired by the words, but we're actually looking for the discoveries. There are no discoveries. There's no mention of it. There is no mention of it. So, your answer is, for number seven, not given. There it is, guys. That's how you break down the package. Now, again, that actually took me, what, I guess you could say, what, eight minutes or something like that. Oh, my God. I hate this. because I don't... Ooh, Yeah, there I go. Man, I'm so sexy. Okay, so anyways, guys, there it is. That's the breakdown. That's the breakdown of the entire uh, true, false, and not given. Now, for that number five, again, you're going to have questions on the test like that that just don't make any goddamn sense. And you're going to have to try to make sense from it. Now, number seven is tricky because Perkin was possibly inspired by his words, but never the discoveries. It didn't talk about Lewis Pasteur's discoveries. And you saw where I found all those answers. You could ultimately look at it and say, wow, the true, all those answers were right there in the first probably three, four paragraphs on the first page. Why? Because questions eight through 13 are on the second page, or it might cover, the both, it might cover both pages. It all depends. But because I only did true, false, and not given today, I'm just going to break down true, false, and not given, or else this would be a 500,000 YouTube video, minute YouTube video, whatever you want to call it. It is terrible out there. But anyways, I hope you guys understood this. Any comments whatsoever, comment down below. All the links in the description if you want to follow me on Facebook and get that all going. I would be more than happy to ask any of your questions. If you guys want me to do another passage, please comment down below. Send me a Twitter or Instagram, whatever it may be. Just send me a notification saying, hey, yeah, I am interested. I would like you to do another breakdown. Done. All right. So with that being said, have a wonderful morning, afternoon, and evening. I'm your host, Arsenio, as usual. So good to be back, brother or sisters. Over and out.